I told Ben when he asked me this that probably all of you know it already. I mean, I'm guessing. And he said, eh. And then, no, I don't know what he said. I, I didn't, I don't know. But uh, I remember the uh, John Carlin, whatever, not all the time, but a lot of times when he'd leave church, he would say, Ethan, don't worry about your examples that you do during sermons. We don't remember them anyway. <laughs> so use them as often as you want. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to, I did have a hard time figuring out how to start this uh, because of the way I want to go. So uh, I'm going to start it off this way. The Apostle Paul says a lot about the body of Christ and all of us being individual members of that body of Christ. And I thought of that, Paul and all that body of Christ talk, as I thought about my faith journey. My faith journey really is reflective of all the people that God brought into my life. All through my life, from the very beginning till now, it is amazing to me how God works through the people God sends. I'm not going to give you a lot of examples because you want to go home, March Madness is on, and all that good stuff. Brandon, what's the score? <laughs> so, but I'm going to give you a foo, okay? I'm a preacher's kid, and yes, I was one of those preacher kids, okay? You're a preacher kid, you get used to being in a fishbowl. So whenever anybody would ask me, are you going to be a pastor, Ethan? I would say there is no way in God's green earth I'm ever going to be a pastor. But God sends me these people in my life for my faith journey, for my walk, and things happen when you let go and let God. You think that this phrase I, I say about let the Spirit lead come, came to me easily, you're not right. All through my life, after my dad died when I was 11 years old, everybody would come up to me and ask me how I was doing. You got to be a pastor <laughs> on that, okay? All the way through my life, people would say that. Ivan Trout was one of these people that God brought into my life. Ivan was my boss during junior and senior high school and my first year of college. Ivan would knew what I went through without having a dad, and he kind of was a dad figure to me, and he was the first one that I actually gave more than a second to when they said, are you going to be a pastor, Ethan? Because Ivan could do things to you that you could not stand. He was a Navy man, and he could do his thumb, he could take his thumb, and he would hit pressure points on your body that would make you cringe. All right? So I was pretty respectful to Ivan. So when he would say, are you going to be a pastor? No. Not going to be. All right? Went through high school. Okay? People in my life still, God, God showing me these things. All right? People in my life, I was a normal PK in high school, and what that means is I was a wild child. But even during that wild time, God sent people into my life that, that, shaped my faith journey, even in high school. Went to college, I gotta show you this one. Went to college, went to K-State in, well that's the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Went to K-State for one year. I went to K-State, this is gonna be, you may wanna hold kids ears here, but I took a senior trip, my senior year in high school, went to Kearney, excuse me, Kearney State, and there were people sunbathing, Yeah. People sunbathing, and there was a lot of parties. That's why I chose Carney. Was it a good thing? No. <laughs> Lived in a dorm, but yet even in the dorm, God brought me these people that asked me about faith. Not, not literally, but did a faith thing. And then, at Carney, my sister comes up to me, a sibling, believe it or not, and God works through these siblings, and God worked through my sister Lynette and says, Ethan, my sister says, let's go to Fremont. You can get out of the dorm, you can go to college there. 
I go, there's a college in Fremont? Yes, Midland Lutheran, it's a liberal arts. Boom, I went, I got out of the dorm. This is a prime example of God, all right, working. Go to register for classes. I get assigned a religion prof as my advisor. Eric Egertson, what's his name? A no-nonsense guy, all right? Goes up to me in line and said, Ethan, have you ever thought about being a pastor? <laughs> yeah. No. My dad was a pastor, no. And he said, well, Ethan, just in case you change your mind, do you want to sign up for Greek? No. <laughs> Looked at me and said, Ethan, if you attend class, I will guarantee you a B. <laughs> I am a worthless student. B's were high marks for me. I said, I am there. All right. So because of that, the chaplain of Midland heard that by chance, I might be a pastor. There's something there. So the chaplain gets me involved in youth ministry classes. All right. Then, all the way through college, are you still going to be a pastor? No, 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 no. Till my senior year. Finally, finally, I said, I'll be a pastor. Go to Warburg Seminary. My dad went to Warburg Seminary. Two uncles went to Warburg Seminary. You may say, whoop de dee de doo I say, God sends people into your life. Frank Benz was my Hebrew professor. He knew one of my uncles, went to seminary with him. Guess what? I would have flunked Hebrew. Frank Benz goes, Ethan, I knew Harry. I'll work with you. I passed it by the skin of my chin. All right? Boom, God sent it there. And you may say, that's no big whoop, but when you're in seminary, that's a big whoop Hebrew, man. Do I remember any of it now? No! So God keeps sending people like this in my life. All right? And when we let go and let God, it is amazing the people that comes in. My first call, I've never, I've never ever as a pastor said, I want to leave any place. I want to go anywhere. But if you let go and let God, God sends you these awesome places with awesome people that build your faith. That builds your love of God and love of Christ. And guess what? For 17 years, God sent me here. And guess what? You were those people. You were those people that God sent into my life to teach me how to be a pastor, to teach me faith, to teach me endurance, to teach me how to walk the walk of being a follower of Christ. And then once again, after 17 years, God says, you got to go someplace else, Ethan. Go up in Nebraska. There was people there that God sent in my life, that made a difference in my life. And then after five years, there was another person that came into my life on a text message at UCC, United Church of Christ in Place Center. I was in the office. I get a text message from somebody we all know. Ben Fulton and says, have you ever thought about being a camp executive director? And I can't say what I said. <laughs> but no. But once again, God sends people. And that's why it's a very short version. I know you're not saying it's short, but it's a short version of what God can do. And that's, you know, I, I was thinking about this today in my faith journey. It's all about you. It's all about people God sends into our lives. And you all have those opportunities. There are people in your lives right now that God has sent in that are helping you in your faith journey. And it's you. It's you. And that's why it's so important for all of us to live the love of God. All right? Now, my last thing. Now, well, who knows? But my last thing, I think. All right? I got one more example, then I got maybe another one. Okay. 
I got to give this one because my wife is a big sign person. Kelly's a big sign person. All right? And, he, and I think that's another thing that God sends into your life, the signs, part of a faith journey. Okay? When I was, before I came here, I was at Albert, Kansas. The farthest west Kelly will ever go in Kansas. Great Bend area. Out in the middle of nowhere. Still not looking for a call. Gordy Peterson, assistant the bishop, comes up to me and says, Ethan, I think I got a good match for you. It says, Parish in Kansas by Salina, Fallen, Salisbury, Lutheran Parish. And I said, eh, let spirit lead. That might have been the first time I ever said that. Let spirit lead. We come, we interview. Awesome time, blew through a stop sign and fallen, told Doug Anderson I did it, not knowing he was a detective <laughs> on the call committee. All right. So I do interview, and Kelly and I sit there going, do we do this? Because we weren't looking, but there's something. Do we do this? Finally, Kelly says, God, if you want us to go to Fallen Salemsburg, you're going to have to write it down. And when Kelly says something, even God <laughs> listens. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to be sleeping in the fellowship hall tonight. <laughs> no. So we said that. So then we go on vacation. We come back to peace. I go down to the basement, and the quilting women are there. And the quilting women said, Ethan, Augsburg Fortress is here, Olin Mill, whatever you want to call it. The directory people, photo directory, were here, and they left a sample for us to look at. I go to the desk. The sample book out of a million they left for us, Fallen Salemsburg directory. I take it home. Kelly says, boom! <laughs> there's our son! And there you go. That's all part of it. Now we talked about Ben is talking about this Lenten thing and repentance and, and and forgiveness and relationship and all that stuff. Somebody, and this is kind of a downer to end on, but it's a Lent's a serious thing. It's a joyous, serious thing. And I'm taking too long, sorry about that. But the somebody at Tech Study during when we first started Lent said, you know, we go through this repentance and forgiveness thing every Sunday. Do we really even get it anymore? What do we repent of? And I thought of that, and I thought of you folks here today, and how we're once again together, which is blowing my mind, so you can teach me some more stuff. You can show me your faith. You can teach me about, about whatever is going on. The biggest worry I have, not the worry, but the biggest thing that I repent of, I think, after I after thinking about this is on Sunday morning when I go down to Springfield they're going to have confession and forgiveness and I think the biggest thing in my faith journey is worrying that one day I'm going to be in the presence of God and Jesus is going to look at me and say Ethan what are the two biggest commands and I'll say love God with all your heart soul and on your mind. And the other one, Ethan, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's going to freak me out. Because I know there are times that God has sent me into people's lives that I have chosen to do the wrong thing. That I have chosen the wrong work. And if I have done that to any of you, I am truly sorry for you. But you are important people in my faith, in my life. And so are so many of you. That's my faith journey. It'll go on until the day where God will also look at me and say, Ethan, you did choose big time. You made some wrong choices. But you know what? Jesus took that on. 
on the cross, Jesus took on that sin. And you know what? Because of that, come on in. We got to do it. Thank you. See, I learned a lot of things that I didn't you may have heard all that stuff before. A lot of it's news to me, so that was great. Thank you very much, Ethan, for sharing your story. That was, that was amazing. All right, we continue with our service with the prayer. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The light shines in the darkness.
source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray as we do every Sunday morning, God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. service. Another huge thank you to the Property Safety and Security Committees and uh, their spouses and, uh, and to Pastor Ethan for coming and speaking for us. Thanks so much. Everybody, go in peace and let the Spirit lead. Thanks, Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you Sunday. <laughs>